Welcome to the presentation, Human Exxon Radii Estimation at MRI Scale, Deep Learning combined with Large Scale Light Microscopy. My name is Laurin Mauthorst and I will guide you through the presentation. In vivo Exxon Radius assessment using MRI is of neuroscientific relevance since it is, for example, related to the neuronal conduction velocity. In the past, ex vivo 2D histology based on manually labeled electron microscopy, or short MLEM, has been used as the gold standard to validate the underlying biophysical models of the MR signal. While EM offers a high level of detail, typical sections cover at most a few thousand exons and a spatial extent of 100 microns edge length. Thereby, they are far smaller than typical MRI voxels with an edge length of 1 mm. This is a problem because MRI-based exon radius estimation is strongly affected by large, sparsely occurring exons, which are likely underrepresented in these small EM sections. To illustrate the impact of these large exons in MRI-based radius assessment, we compare the weighting of exon radii as used for the MRI visible effective radius to that used for the arithmetic mean radius, which is commonly reported in histological studies. For the arithmetic mean radius, exons with a given radius are weighted by the frequency at which they occur, as can be seen in the standard histogram. For the same ensemble of exons, the weighted histogram in the bottom shows how exon radii are weighted for the MRI visible effective radius which is the power law expression on the bottom right that was derived from the expression for the effective radius. As a consequence, the histogram is much more weighted towards larger radii than the standard histogram above. The aim of the study was to estimate a representative distribution of MRI visible large exons by combining 2D large scale light microscopy, or short, LSLM with deep learning. The image shows a typical LSLM section that covers multiple times the cross-sectional area of an MRI voxel of 1 mm edge length, highlighted as white dashed lines. In contrast, the EM section is much smaller. However, the comparison of small subsections resampled to the same resolution illustrates the limitations of LSLM. Due to its point spread function, LSLM cannot resolve small exons with a radius of 0.3 microns or less. Additionally, the contrast and overall image quality is deteriorated by the staining, whose intensity varies spatially across sections. To estimate exon radii on LSLM sections, we employed a three-component pipeline. First, we applied pixel-wise semantic segmentation as exon, myelin or background using a CNN. Then we segmented individual exon instances using connected component labeling. Finally, Exxon radii were approximated for circles with equivalent areas to those of the exon instances. For the semantic segmentation component of our pipeline, we used a UNet with ImageNet pre-trained ResNet18 encoders. We employed transfer learning to adapt all weights, that is, we did not freeze any weights during training. A categorical cross-entropy loss was optimized with classes weighted with inverse sampling frequency. We used ADAM to optimize hyperparameters in a fourfold cross validation approach. The best model was then chosen in terms of average dice score for exon and myelin. Our dataset covered three tissue samples from three different subjects a corpus callosum, a corticospinal tract, and an optic chiasm. For the latter two, one large scale light microscopy section each was acquired. Both sections were used for the training. For the corpus callosum sample, we acquired a total of 10 LSLM sections, of which 4 were assigned to the training dataset. In total, 17 subsections across all sections in the training dataset were annotated to train the CNN. The remaining 6 sections of the corpus callosum sample were assigned to the test dataset. To enable cross microscopy comparison, we acquired a corresponding electron microscopy section for every LSLM section in the test dataset. These EM sections were consecutively cut to their LSLM counterparts. We assessed the presented pipeline on three main levels. First, we tested the semantic segmentation component of our pipeline in terms of commonly evaluated segmentation metrics. Then, we investigated the measures of interest, the arithmetic mean radius and the effective radius. To approximate their errors on reference sections or subsections, we employed comparison with reference values obtained through manual annotation using both LSLM and EM images. Finally, we evaluated the potential of our pipeline to capture the spatial 
anatomical variation of the arithmetic mean radius and the effective radius on whole LSLM sections by assessing their robustness to the image or staining intensity. We tested the segmentation performance on 30 small and 12 large LSLM subsections. Whereas small patches were entirely annotated, larger patches were only selectively annotated for axons with a radius of at least 1.6 microns to assess the performance on MRI-relevant large axons. All metrics given in the table consider the binary classification task of discriminating axon and background and are given as the mean values of overall subsections. The performance on large axons was consistently better than the overall performance for every metric considered. The error of the arithmetic mean radius was assessed in a cross-microscopy approach. For this, we compared the whole section estimations of the arithmetic mean radius based on large-scale light microscopy to their counterparts obtained from consecutively cut, manually labeled electron microscopy sections. For the effective radius, we evaluated the influence of small axons below the LSLM resolution limit of 0.3 microns by comparing the LSLM-based estimation on whole sections with MLEM-informed references. To generate these, we removed small axons from the LSLM-based axon radii ensembles and added small axons from the MLEM-based axon radii ensembles according to the ratio of small and larger axons observed in MLEM. To estimate the error introduced by large, false positively detected or false negatively missed axons, we compared the LSLM-based estimations of the effective radius to a reference that was corrected for these errors. Large, false positively detected axons marked in red were only considered for the estimated effective radius, whereas large, false negatively missed axons marked in yellow were considered only for the ground truth. The remaining white axons were obtained from the estimated axon ensemble and were used in both cases. The errors of the arithmetic mean and effective radius are summarized in the table in terms of normalized root mean square deviation and mean bias. Experiments were repeated with and without considering axons below the LSLM resolution limit of 0.3 microns. Comparing the errors for the effective radius, we found that the error introduced by large, false positive or false negative axons was the dominant error contribution, whereas the error introduced in the ensemble of small axons was negligible. Both error and bias of the arithmetic mean radius were comparable to those of the effective radius, albeit different sign for the bias. To evaluate the potential of our pipeline to capture spatial and atomical variation across whole LSLM sections, we assessed the spatial variation of the ensemble exon radii and investigated whether they were affected by the image or staining intensity. For this, we generated spatially smoothed maps of the arithmetic mean radius and the effective radius. The maps were normalized to the section mean. Whereas the pattern of the arithmetic mean radius resembled that of the image intensity, the pattern for the effective radius did not. This was also quantitatively assessed in a correlation analysis. We generated similar maps to those shown on the image in the center, but sampled on an equally spaced grid and then computed the correlation with the image intensity. For this, we pooled over five sections with similar exon radii distributions. While the arithmetic mean radius correlated significantly with the image intensity, the effective radius did not. Consequently, mapping spatial and atomical variation of the effective radius on whole LSLM sections may be feasible using our pipeline, whereas for the arithmetic mean radius, it is not. To conclude, the proposed pipeline based on large-scale light microscopy is better suited to estimate the MRI-visible effective radius than the arithmetic mean radius. Albeit similar error and bias, the significant correlation with the image intensity proved our pipeline incapable to map the spatial and atomical variation of the arithmetic mean radius, whereas mapping the effective radius seems feasible. The better suitability for the large axon dominated effective radius was also reflected in higher segmentation performance for large axons. We demonstrated that the presented pipeline has the potential to provide reference data for MRI-based axon radius models. However, Further quantification of errors, for example systematic under or overestimation of large axons and errors in the bulk of the axon radii distribution is required.
Thank you for your attention.